So welcome to another video here at Back to Classics. Uh, today we're going to discuss part two of this uh, 1978 uh, Ducati 900 TT Formula One restoration. Uh, we can show you the link to the uh, previous episode where we uh, got this bike uh, first in our workshop and uh, started it up. Uh, but it's now time, as you can see, to go ahead with the, uh, with the bodywork uh, to be fitted. And we're well on the way with that. More about that later. Uh, we're also going to discuss the, uh, the history behind the NCR uh, workshop and uh, what it all achieved in the 1970s with the uh, Bevel Drive racing bikes they, they have built. Uh, but also we're going to discuss how uh, we here at Back to Classics are aiming to uh, recreate these machines uh, from the ground up. So we're, uh, it's a huge project we're undertaking and uh, we'd like to uh, take you along for the first steps about, the, about that, that project we're working on. So um, first dive into the history of the NCR racing shop. So about the history uh, behind the, uh, the NCR uh, racing shop, uh, you have to, uh, we have to go back to the uh, uh, early 1970s. In fact, 1970 was the year that Ducati decided to enter into the 500 Grand Prix racing. At that time, there was a, uh, a board of directors at Ducati which was very favorable uh, uh, towards racing, uh, which was uh, uh, shared with uh, uh, famous engineer Fabio Taglioni who built a couple of uh, beautiful races and they were mildly successful in, in Grand Prix racing uh, and uh, that later continued uh, to the uh, Imola racetrack with the 200 mile races there first in 1972 with the double victory and then later in 1973 uh, not with a victory second place that year but the uh, development behind that that engine that uh, in fact the whole racing bike uh, that was uh, was a huge step uh, even from uh, uh, the year before but the same year also saw the board of directors uh, being fired and a new director came in to Ducati, uh, which was the Ecker. And uh, this man, the Ecker, he was uh, not a friend of uh, racing and therefore probably also not a friend of Fabio Taglioni. So uh, this new approach towards racing uh, within the Ducati company, uh, yeah, that made it really difficult for people like, uh, like Taglioni, but also others there uh, to continue their, their work and it was a well a huge battle going on uh, within the within that firm. Uh, so what actually was uh, happening? Uh, of course, there is a uh, uh, Italian way of uh, doing whatever you like without telling anybody about it. Uh, and uh, what they in fact effectively created was a sort of uh, outsourced racing department from the Ducati factory, and that was set up around 1974-75, uh, which was called NCR. So how did they do that? Two ex-Ducati uh, uh, factory workers, Giorgio Nepoti and Rino Caraci, uh, they've set up a, a, a racing shop of their own, Nepoti Caraci Racing, NCR, uh, which was also uh, located in Bologna, very conveniently, very close to the factory. Uh, it was set up as an independent uh, racing shop, uh, but in fact it got the uh, backing of Ducati uh, factory employees. Uh, so not officially, it was not so that the, uh, that the, uh, the Ducati outsourced the racing department uh, completely to, uh, to NCR, but at least it was uh, effectively uh, the, racing, the new racing department of, uh, of Ducati. Uh, with a lot of help from people like Fabio Taglioni and Franco Farnay, obviously the known people at Ducati who were uh, very, uh, very keen on racing. Um, so that was the way it was set up. Um, Taglioni was able to get some funds for uh, the NCR racing team to compete in the FIM Coupe de uh, Coupe d'Endurance uh, in 1975. And uh, was the first bike was developed uh, at NCR, like I said, with the help of Ducati. And uh, much was based on the uh, knowledge they've gathered over the years, especially in 1973 with the, uh, with the Imola racing bike. Um, a lot of parts were shared or further developed. So, for instance, the, uh, uh, the engine uh, it did not receive the, uh, the shorter stroke for, uh, uh, like the, the Imola uh, 1973 bike had. So it had a standard stroke, standard bore, uh, but a very highly tuned uh, engine still. 
and it was fitted to a frame that was quite similar to that bike, uh, to uh, the 1973 um, Imola racing bike. Albeit slightly changed, but the frames were all made by a company called Daspa. Uh, very lightweight, very, uh, well, very uh, composed and, and certainly aimed at, at racing. And uh, what they did, they entered this, uh, this racing bike into the uh, 24 hours at Montreux. So for 1975, uh, they entered the uh, 24 hours of Montreux with uh, uh, Salvador Caneas and Benjamin Grau as, uh, as drivers uh, with this specifically made bike. Uh, we can show you some pictures. It was a highly special bike, uh, like I said, largely based on the 1973 short stroke Imola racer, uh, albeit with the standard stroke, uh, but with uh, narrower uh, uh, crankcases to uh, get the exhaust tucked in to get more ground clearance uh, and a lot of very, very special parts, a very beautiful bike that was, uh, they entered with. And they actually won that event uh, in 1975. So that was uh, the basis to further develop uh, the, uh, the bike. Uh, later it got the uh, Campagnolo uh, wheels, which were a little lighter compared to the, uh, to the Borani uh, uh, spoked wire wheels. And uh, a lot of upgrades were done as well. So over the course of 1976 and 77, a number of highly special endurance aimed bikes were created for a number of teams that uh, goes too far perhaps to, to name all the racing outings they did with these, uh, with these bikes. But they were quite successful in, in many occasions, uh, especially in the, uh, in the FIM Coupe d'Endurance. Uh, what was the bike about? It was, like I said, a Daspa uh, frame. Earlier bikes had the standard uh, crankcases. Later on they were uh, cut standard crankcases with a welded in plate to make it narrower. Eventually, uh, but I, we come back to that later, a set of new uh, crank cases were specially casted uh, for, for racing purposes. But uh, the frame was basically always this, uh, this Daspa, especially uh, developed for racing. Uh, it had very special parts like front forks made of magnesium, especially by, uh, by Marzocchi. Uh, there were highly uh, tuned engine obviously with uh, special cylinder heads were even made at that time with 60 degree valve angle compared to the uh, standard 80 degrees the, the Gatti bevel drive engine uh, had. Uh, so a lot of uh, special parts were made and these bikes were all uh, well very aimed at these endurance events. You can also see that with the uh, uh, most of these uh, endurance machines they had this quick release set up for the uh, rear wheel where the uh, wheel could be taken out with the brake disc and the sprocket uh, still leaving uh, that in place. So uh, easy to swap the, uh, the wheel on the back. So that's all aimed at endurance racing. Um, during 1977, um, Fabio Taglioni, he envisioned, together with others, uh, that they could also be successful uh, in the uh, Formula One races at the Isle of Man. And that was the uh, idea to take that endurance bike and, um, and mildly change it, uh, maybe simplify it a little bit, to uh, uh, homologate it as was needed, but also to be very competitive on the island, Isle of Man uh, to uh, enter into Formula One racing. So what they uh, then did in 1978 was to create the, uh, what was later be known as the 900 uh, TT Formula One. And that is the bike that we see here. Uh, it was the only of the uh, racing bikes that were made in the 70s that were uh, sort of uh, built in a series. Um, m most specifications are the same throughout that series of a total of about 28 bikes that were built. And uh, that was, uh, like I said, a little simplified to, uh, compared to the earlier uh, endurance machines in the sense that it didn't have that uh, quick release uh, rear wheel, uh, but also it had the well, slightly devised frame, slightly devised bodywork, uh, and that was uh, put on sale as a uh, customer racing bike that you could order from Ducati in 1978. And they were also available in 79 still. Uh, the engine, however, that was completely uh, changed for this, uh, for this particular instance. There were already these, these problems with uh, uh, crankcases uh, when they were uh, cut and weld and a plate was welded in to get the uh, exhaust narrower. Uh, the heat transfer towards to in these crankcases that gave problems with, uh, uh, with cracks appearing uh, at high revs, obviously. Uh, so that made NCR, together with Ducati, uh, decide uh, to create a set of crankcases specifically for racing. 
and uh, the NCR uh, TT Formula One was the first to receive that. Many of these racing bikes that were uh, already out there in 76 and 77 also received a set of these cases uh, later on because they were uh, sand casted and were much stronger than the earlier used uh, uh, crankcases. Uh, not only the crankcases were uh, specifically built, also the outer covers, uh, the uh, cylinder heads were specially made, uh, albeit uh, based on standard castings for the uh, street bikes, beautifully made crank shafts, everything was done to, uh, to get uh, more power out of, uh, out of the bevel drive, uh, bevel drive engine. Stroke and bore was uh, still standard to uh, homologate the bike. Uh, and make sure that it was uh, closer to the uh, 900 Supersport specifications, uh, which was uh, uh, the homologation model for this bike uh, when entering in the Formula One. Uh, so like I said, this is one of the 28 built uh, bikes during 1978 and 79. Uh, two of these bikes of the 28 were delivered to uh, sports motorcycles in, uh, in Manchester and they were entered in the 1978 Isle of Man TT, famously won by Mike Hillwood on that occasion. And uh, well, that was uh, of course the, 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 the big breakthrough Ducati was hoping for in the 1970s to get uh, a name, uh, especially in the UK, but uh, around the world uh, with, that, with that specific victory. Uh, maybe we come back to uh, that specific race and how it all was, uh, was done in a, in a, in a separate video. Uh, there, is, uh, uh, some, uh, there are some very nice books available about this uh, uh, event at the Isle of Man that we have in our online shop. I can show you a link. One uh, written by uh, Greg Pullen uh, about uh, all of the efforts Ducati did over the years at the Isle of Man TT and a specific uh, uh, book by Pat Slynn uh, of the 1978 uh, victory uh, they, uh, they did in, uh, in that year. So maybe you should check that out if you want to know more. Like I said, we can probably come back with a separate video on the, uh, on the Isle of Man victories, uh, victory in 1978. Um, so that is more about the history about this bike. They did went on into uh, 79 and uh, even 1980 with uh, competing with the bevel drive engine. Uh, but uh, by then, especially the two strokes uh, were dominating in the uh, field of uh, Grand Prix racing and the Japanese manufacturers in the big displacement, especially Honda and, uh, and Kawasaki, they had uh, some very, very good bikes uh, and it was very hard to compete on that level for Ducati uh, with, the, uh, with the increasingly becoming older bevel drive engine, which was uh, then eventually replaced by the uh, by the belt drive uh, bikes with which Ducati also had very much uh, success in the early 1980s. But again, more about that uh, in a uh, probably future video. Um, so that's about the history behind these NCR bikes. So what we're aiming for here, uh, two things effectively. Uh, one is to restore this bike and bring it back to its former glory, uh, ready for the racetrack. And uh, as you can see, we've already started with a, uh, a big part of that, uh, which is the bodywork uh, uh, fitment and uh, making sure that everything is uh, correct before we take it apart completely and, uh, uh, well, refurbish all the other parts that are, that are needed. So the next step is now to also include this Daspa racing frame to our, uh, our catalogue. Uh, we are currently uh, making uh, 3D models uh, based on this actual frame that you see here, of course, uh, but also other uh, additions. Uh, that we're going to uh, include in making these frames. So basically there, were, there will be two versions, uh, one for the earlier endurance bikes that I told you about just now and one for the uh, TT Formula One. Uh, basically the same frame but with some mild changes here and there. Uh, uh, we're also going to include those as well as the rear swing arm which will also be, uh, be added to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the catalog. Uh, with that done, and already we're uh, preparing a lot of this uh, with this restoration, uh, is the bodywork uh, uh, parts that are needed to uh, include that into uh, the catalog. Uh, this is an original frame, uh, uh, sorry, an original uh, tank and seat combination, as we would like to call it, uh, which is going to be used to make a mold, uh, and therefore we can also have these parts available in the future uh, by making these new in new fiberglass and uh, available as well. Again here, two versions, uh, the one with the uh, uh, with flat sides on the uh, TT Formula One uh, 1978 
and one with the, uh, uh, the winged seat. Again, we show you a picture of the earlier uh, endurance bikes. Uh, same goes for the front mudguard that we're going to recreate and uh, we're now aiming at fitting a uh, fairing to this bike uh, to get that sorted as well. So we can uh, make a mold out of whatever is uh, fitted to this one and make sure that the fairing that we're going to offer in our online store will also perfectly fit this, uh, this bike. So we also need a set of uh, front forks obviously and that has already been taken care of as we have these available, uh, beautifully made uh, front fork with uh, uh, modern uh, internals, modern ca internal cartridge in there, uh, beautifully made to, uh, uh, and to the correct specifications of, the, uh, of, the, of these racing bikes. Uh, so that is covered. Wheels as well, we have these uh, wheels available from, uh, from Marvik, uh, newly made uh, casted wheels, uh, so uh, that has already been done and uh, well with that all combined and a lot of other minor stuff like brackets and, th and things and uh, throttles, cables and, and uh, a little bit of wiring, uh, we can soon offer a complete rolling chassis for, uh, this, uh, for this racing bike effectively. Uh, we do have a number of uh, possibilities to, to create new racing engines as well, so we, we could offer a complete racing bike uh, very very soon. Uh, but uh, later on, we're going to, the, going to get this uh, into the next phase, uh, which will also mean that we're going to develop uh, the racing engine as well, uh, which will mean that we're going to uh, take this, uh, this engine apart and make sure that every little detail is uh, uh, also into our uh, 3D uh, uh, modeling software and uh, we can recreate uh, those as well, meaning that we're going to aim at uh, crank uh, cases, the narrow crank cases, uh, all of the outer covers, uh, uh, but as well as all the internals. We also need like the uh, crankshaft, uh, the gearbox, uh, pistons, liners, uh, cylinders, uh, up to the cylinder heads. So it's a huge project we will probably be working on for, uh, for many years uh, to come, but uh, well, the, the, at, at least shows our aim into uh, getting uh, many of these, uh, of these bikes uh, back on the road effectively creating uh, new racing bikes as well. And you have to bear in mind that many of the parts that we're going to uh, develop uh, in order to do that will also be, uh, you, can, can, you can be used on, on street engines as well. So there's a, a compatibility there uh, as well. And uh, be sure that we will also develop a lot of uh, parts for street bikes uh, as we go along on this process, obviously. So, um, should you be interested in any of uh, our developments or uh, should you be, uh, uh, should you be willing to uh, uh, take part in this, uh, in this endeavor that we, uh, that we, take, uh, that we have taken on. Uh, be sure to contact us. Uh, I'm sure you can find our details on our, uh, on our website. So here you can see how uh, uh, we go about with the uh, 3D modeling. Uh, we're quite far, as you can see. Uh, I can show you here, this is the, uh, the endurance uh, type uh, we're developing here. So the frame has all been uh, uh, set up and uh, done in, uh, in 3D as well as the, uh, uh, the quick release system for the rear wheel that we talked uh, earlier, and uh, the front fork, obviously, and the wheels, and a lot of the engine, although this, uh, these internals still are uh, mostly uh, street-derived, so there's a lot more to do. Uh, but this is, the, is going to be the basis for our, uh, for our further developments into getting these parts, uh, these parts available. So that concludes this video here at Back to Classics. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and uh, got a little background about the, uh, the historic uh, importance of these NCR racing bikes as well as uh, a little background about this specific project and of course our uh, long-term project to get all these, uh, these parts sorted so we can recreate these uh, racing machines uh, for, uh, for the future as well. Uh, for now, thank you very much for watching. Toodle doki. See you next time. <laughs>